This is the time of year where anglers are digging out their ice fishing equipment. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. My guest this week is Fisheries Division Chief Greg Power. Greg, first of all, are there any ice fishing regulation changes this year? Uh, this is the new first winter of the new two-year uh, uh, fishing proclamation, but when it comes to ice fishing, there is no real changes to that. Uh, there's a couple that have to do with limits on like smallmouth bass, but no, ice fishing regulations for those that get out there, nothing's really changed. On an average year, what percentage of fishing is ice fishing? Uh, it can be substantial. On an on a open winter, at least in the past, on an open winter, we've seen as much as a fourth or 25% of our entire annual fishing effort come from ice fishing season. On a bad winter, uh, historically, it could be as low as 5%. So, you know, again, probably anywhere between 5 and 25%. And with all these side-by-sides with tracks and, and snow bears and everything else, does that increase our, our uh, ice fishing during these bad years? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question, Mike. And I, yes, the answer is yes. And it's, uh, ice fishing has changed dramatically over the last four decades. I mean, it's it, it, incredible the amount of money uh, amount of technology that goes into ice fishing. It's not what it once was. And uh, along those lines is people have apparently a lot more money in their in their pockets and they're spending a lot of money on, uh, on uh, equipment to get them on the lakes. Track vehicles, ATVs, they've been around a long time, but you know, track vehicles and even snow bears and, and they're expensive. You're seeing a lot more of that when it comes to ice fishing season. So um, even in a bad winter now, you know, it seems like people can get onto their, those lakes. So that's, in the, in the big picture, that's a bit of a game changer. So from our fish management perspective, um, we're probably going to continue to see more effort and more harvest in the winter. Something we'll have to keep, a track, keep track of. Okay, and with these large track vehicles, people are pulling trailers and they're, explain that uh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and that's become a bit of an issue uh, uh, because they have, they bring along a vehicle that can get them onto the lake. Historically, again, people would, you know, once you had drive on ice, which is usually around the holidays, Christmas, New Year's, you have good drive on ice and people drive their trucks on the lake. Well, now they have the track vehicles and the snow bears, they're trailering them and they're not driving the truck on the lake, so they park on the shoreline, which is fine usually, but in some lakes when there's a good bite or stuff out there, there'll be 40, 50 of these trailers trucks and trailers on a county road that's fairly narrow and it's causing problems with landowners you know with their farm equipment and stuff so uh, yeah we're seeing more and more problems just with the parking of the vehicle so again use some common sense uh, ice fishermen out there and and uh, respect you know think of it what happens if a combine comes down that trail and make sure you get off into the ditch last year we had record moisture in the landscape how's that this year and how's that for access but, well, access, you know, going into the winter this year is unlike, totally unlike last year. Last year was just record setting in every regard. And we had the issues last winter, especially the first half of the ice fishing season because there was so much water running, you know, groundwater, everything still running that we did not have good safe ice till, boy, it was probably well into January. Um, that was atypical. This year, it seems it's certainly setting up to be a very open winter so far. Uh, normal winter, so I, I don't, we're, we're not going to have the is same issues we had last year, that's for sure. Okay, uh, we sold near record fishing licenses here since April. Is that going to carry into ice fishing? Well, I think the interest is there, yeah, every since, you know, this is 2020, of course, is a COVID year, and because of that, all outdoor recreation, doesn't matter what, you, what you're doing, including fishing, we've seen such an uptick in, in, you know, people out there and participating. Uh, at this point, I would totally anticipate, you know, we have good opportunity on the landscape that we're going to continue to see uh, perhaps more license sold, but those that have their license, they, there'll be a lot of people all ice fishing this winter. Okay, let's talk fish population statewide, uh, walleyes. Yeah, we're, we're in decent shape. Uh, all that water last year, again, really set us up well for the future, but that future still is a, probably a couple years. It's only going to get better. Um, this, but this winter we are really, over the last 10 years, we've seen a slow transformation away from the pike and perch uh, populations that once were so strong. And we've got a lot of new lakes out there with walleye, new introductions of walleye and stocking of walleye. 
a number of those lakes are now we're getting the catchable size walleye. So we fully anticipate a good winter of uh, especially walleye ice fishing throughout the state. Okay, and there's still plenty of lakes where pike are. Oh, anticipated. yeah, we still have we still have good pike populations for sure. You know, I suggest going to our fishing guide and and so forth. But there's a lot of p good pike pike opportunities scattered again, and that's a nice thing too. Is they're scattered pretty much throughout the state. How about perch? Perch numbers have tr been trending down, and they continue. I there will be a couple. There will be a couple we. Uh, lakes maybe we've never even heard of yet, yeah, but uh, especially the quality perch lakes, they're, they're getting to be fewer and fewer of them out there. Okay, bluegills and crappies. It's same, uh, or I mean, same meaning there's, it's the same uh, opportunity, especially bluegill, but probably over the time. And, and that what's neat about bluegill in the southwest North Dakota, that's probably the better quadrant of the state for bluegill fisheries, and our populations are in good shape. So that, again, both bluegill and crappie there, the opportunities are out there. With the water levels still good, what's the winter kill potential? Too um, early to tell or? You know, let's go back to last winter we had, because uh, of all that water, we had very little winter kill, which is a good thing. Because our fisheries, especially these uh, uh, new, new fisheries on the prairie, they're, they're very susceptible to low water. And then if we get a lot of snow, then we get winter kill. Uh, we got through last winter in great shape. So far, you know, we actually really could use the moisture, but uh, virtually no snow on the landscape, you know, going into late November. So we're in good shape. We're a little bit concerned. I was at least back a month ago in the middle of October. We had that really cold snap and the lakes were starting to freeze up way, way earlier than normal uh, since then they reopened. But if they had frozen and frozen solid then, and then we got snow on there, that'd add another month to the winter. And we know from history that when the snow comes early and stays on the ice, that, those are the years that we have a lot more winter kill throughout the state. So, you know, knock on wood, but it looks like we're setting up to be in good shape this winter. Well, let's talk dark house spearfishing. Still a lot of interest? Oh yeah, dark house spearfishing, maybe it's, maybe it's starting to plateau a little bit. Um, it's only been around, you know, 25 or so years, but uh, a lot of interest. There's still, again, decent pike populations. The only regulation change on dark house spearfishing is those that, in the past, you had to register. Anybody that participated, even if you had your five-year-old five-year-olds out there, you're supposed to be registered. Uh, this year, only if you're licensed. So if you're 16 years of age and older, you have to have a fishing license, you need to register. You do that online, it's a real simple process, but the kids, the youth don't have to any longer. Okay, and something we've had for the last few years is the free ice fishing weekend right. in December. Explain right. that. Uh, we've had the June free fishing weekend for 30 years. Uh, just a few years ago, we started this, this, added two more days, so you had for residents only too. But uh, two days during the holidays, the idea would be try to get that weekend in between, let's say Christmas and New Year's. Uh, for a free, free fishing weekend for people that maybe, you know, fam, family or friends are back home, can go out and give, uh, the, give it a try, a new sport. And uh, it's, it's, it's still a little early to tell if it's had a lot of impact, but it's a, it's a neat opportunity. If you've never done it before, now you can go fishing. You don't have to, you know, buy a license. And, uh, and I believe this year it's Christmas day and the day after is where it falls on the calendar, so give it a try. And it's for residents only? Residents only. Okay, so ice fishing should be good this year. Yeah, it, it looks, it's more of the same. It should be a good year, and, and the longer term good news, it should only get better, cross our fingers, so. A lot of great information, Greg, thank you. You bet. For more information on ice fishing in North Dakota, visit the Game and Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov. For Fisheries Division Chief Greg Power and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's program. We'll see you again next week.